All right, let's play a quick exercise, you and I. Pull out your wallet. You guys got your wallet? I'll pull out my wallet. Pull out your cash. I'll pull out my cash. Okay? I hope you still carry cash. So, I got a question for you. Would you rather have your money in the hands of somebody else, or would you rather have your money in your hands of yourself? Okay? What's the answer to that question? By the way, drop it in the comment section below. Millionaire, someone else, or millionaire, myself? You guys got it? So in this episode, I'm going to share with you how millionaires strategize and use taxes as an asset to put more money in their accounts in this episode of Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Seven Fear Squad studio here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And if you watched the previous episode of How Millionaires Think About Taxes, I discussed in that episode these two books, The Trump Tax Cut, as well as Sandy Botkin's book, How to Lower Your Taxes, big time. My two favorite books here the last few years. I've been buying Sandy's book here every year for the last 15 years. But in this episode, I'm going to share with you how millionaires think and strategize about how you use taxes as an asset generator versus a liability creator. So oftentimes people think, man, you know what? Uh, I got my money. You had your money in your hand, right? I got my money. How much of this money do I want to keep? Well, in a future video, I'm going to talk about how millionaires will consider voting. But understanding, first of all, first and foremost, the most important thing on their agenda, which is the economy, money, career, business. And if this is your money, would you rather have 20% of your money gone to somebody else or 40% of your money gone to somebody else and this smiley face turning into a sad face, okay? Because how you vote this coming season is going to be so important of what part of your money is going to be split up to the government. So when you're looking at millionaires and how they think about money, you know, when I was broke, I really didn't care about taxes. I really cared really about what presidential candidate would be in the White House. But the more I started making money, the more I started growing, the more I started making more income, the more I started having expenses, the more I started raising my kids, and I realized that my money was either going to taxes or not going to taxes, really helped me decide which my vote would go towards. And so when you're looking at the whole aspect of your life, the major expenses that you have in your life, they can either help you generate an asset or a liability. So here's two types and two categories that we're gonna be discussing here today is what is an asset? Let's define what an asset is. An asset is something that provides future benefits. So if you buy something, it appreciates in value. There's a goal there where your money's going to compound and grow and it's provide future benefits. Your dollar is gonna to grow to $2. Your $2 is gonna to grow to $4. Your $4, et cetera, et cetera, right? It also generates cash flow. An asset generates cash flow. It brings you money. So anytime you spend money, you got to ask yourself, is this going to be an asset for me or is this just going to be a liability? Is it going to be generating future benefits and generate, generate future cash flow, current cash flow, or is this just going to drain me? Is this just an expenditure that I have zero benefit to have outside of the fact that I just spent money and I have this? And also an asset is based on what you own, what you have titles to, okay? What you have in terms of ownership, it's an asset versus a liability. It says, you know what? This is what I owe. When I'm reading a financial statement, when you're reading uh, your own personal budget, how much more assets do you have than you have liabilities? Do you have more expenditures than you have income? When I wasn't a millionaire, when I wasn't uh, thinking about the rules of the money game, and I finally did a budget, here's what I discovered. I had a lot of liabilities, but no to, little to no assets. I had a lot of expenditures, but little to no income. There's a big reason why I wasn't winning the money game. The idea is, is to flip this around, is to use your liabilities as ways to generate more assets and have your assets create more assets to create more income. That's how you, that's how you start winning the money game, the millionaire way. So as we're looking at the biggest things that you spend your money on, and you can either be a, two types, you can be an employee or you can be an entrepreneur. You can, be, you can be somebody that collects and somebody that generates, okay? You collect a salary or you're somebody that generates salaries, okay? So in this, in this example, I, by the way, I've been on both sides. So when you're looking at the category of being an employee, the thing that you have expense on, if you look at your budget, right? If you look at your budget, if you look at your assets versus liabilities, 
expenditures versus income, okay? Uh, one of the biggest expenditures you'll have is home, whether you own your house or you rent a house. You own a condo or you rent an apartment, okay? And then you have a car. Usually these are two major expenses that people have in their life, where they live and how to get about. In this case, a car. And when you're looking at what you want to do in terms of lifestyle, do you fly? Do you take uh, the train, the bus? Do you have a business? So look at, let's look at the, let's look at the uh, employees uh, in terms of office expenses. So as an employee, what do you normally have? As an employee, you have deductions as a, as a, as a uh, citizen in America paying your taxes. You have opportunities to write off your mortgage interest, right? I noticed that they lowered it here through the Tr uh, uh, Trump Cuts and Jobs Act, but uh, you can still write off a portion of your mortgage interest. Uh, your car. Unless you have reimbursements for your car, you can't write off your car. I remember at one point I had $300 car payment, $400 car payment, $600 car payment, $800 car payment. If I would share with you another video on how I bought my Rolls Royce through my corporation, which is going to be another video coming up here pretty soon, it shocked the crap out of you what I pay for my Rolls Royce. It shocked the crap out of you that I pay, actually pay less than what I paid for my Jeep Cherokee when I came back from Marine Corps deployment in, 2000, in, uh, in, uh, in 1994. Okay, it'll shock you on instead of traveling all over the world to Puerto Rico, to Cancun, to different places, destinations, Bahamas, the, instead of you just having that as an expenditure, how can you create that as, as a, as a, as a write-off? You can't do that as an employee. You can't write off your car. You can't write off your, your travel. And so as an employee, you go back to your place of work, your job, your office building, your factory, right? Your military base. Do you have any deductions when you get there? Chances are you don't. When you get there, you spend money at the local Starbucks, you spend money uh, around the McDonald's, you spend money at the Olive Garden, the, the food court, right? That's where, that's where you spend money. But you just spend money, and it's either a liability to you, or it could be an asset. Okay, let's consider uh, transitioning to entrepreneurship, how millionaires think. Obviously, there's four, four different, five different ways to become a millionaire. One of them you throw out because we throw out lucky being one of the ways to become a millionaire. You want to win the lottery or marry the right person. One of my favorite books the last few years has been Lawyer Taxes Big Time by Sandy Botkin. And when I sat down with this gentleman, Sandy Botkin is a CPA and a former attorney of the IRS, and he's taught hundreds of thousands of taxpayers how to lower their taxes big time. Because one of the biggest expenses you have when you're looking at your house, your car, travel, where you work, commuting, one of your biggest expenses is what? Taxes. And for most people, it's a liability. See, the way millionaires think is uh, 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 taxes is really an asset. Think about this real quick. If I told you you, can, you, you could, could have an option of, of paying any more taxes, okay? And I'm paying any more taxes. From here going forward, you watching this video, you filing your form, you send it to the IRS, and listen, I opt to pay income taxes. You're done. The IRS says no problem. However, comma, Whatever taxes pay for, you cannot use, <laughs> right? So you can't use the roads, you can't use, uh, you can't use uh, the schools for education, you can't use uh, uh, 911, you can't go to a, a, a government-funded hospital, you gotta find your own private doctor, and hopefully a private doctor can find some other way to get to your house, because since you can't use the roads to help you out, he's gotta find a way to helicopter your way in, but by the way, the gas, the, the transportation, they have different taxes. So therefore you can have transportation, uh, safety, and all those different things. You can't use those things now because that's what taxes pay for. You see what I mean? So there's a ripple effect on how taxes can actually benefit you and how taxes are actually a asset. Because as I said in my previous video, how millions think about taxes is this. Instead of over, un unnecessarily overpaying taxes and saying, okay, government, you take care of my tax money, and you deploy it, you find a cost structure for it, and hopefully we provide the quality better than what I would provide the quality and cost benefit for. The IRS says, okay, hey, if you don't like that, we're gonna provide some tax benefits. Says, yeah, you keep your money then. You use the money that you otherwise would have paid in income taxes and redirect that to you because you're establishing a trade or business and say, okay, instead of you, uh, uh, depending upon us to create jobs, you entrepreneur, you create jobs. You train people, you hire people, you coach them up. 
you build them. You build your company to make an impact in the local community around you, okay? So if you don't like overpaying your taxes, no big deal. We will direct that to you because now you're growing a trade or business. So let's take a look at some of these things. So number one, let's look at your house. So as an employee, sure, if, you, if you're owning your home, you can write the interest on your mortgages. By the way, I wanna to disclose to this thing as well. I'm not an accountant, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm just giving you some thoughts to think about to have deeper conversation with people that do your taxes or people that advise you in the area of taxes. So take down these notes and bounce these ideas off of them. This is a guideline and a map for you to have a conversation outside of the person that does your tax at H&R Block. By the way, this is not an H&R Block conversation. I learned long ago that millionaires don't go get their taxes done in H&R Block. They hire either an EA, an enrolled agent, like uh, Evan Rosenberg here, the author of this book, The Trump Tax Cut, or a CPA like Sandy Botkin. See, that's the type of professionals that millionaires will use. So when you're looking at your home, your, your house, okay? If I was paying rent, but I was just an employee, there's no deduction for paying rent. There's no deduction for me just living there and paying rent to my landlord. But if I'm an entrepreneur and I have a millionaire mindset and I want to get to a million bucks, I want to make 50 grand, 100 grand, 250, 500,000, making seven figures, and I'm on your upscale, there's certain things you now you can write off as an entrepreneur. For example, if you have a house, you can write off Expenses for a home office. You can write off expenses if you have uh, in-home care. If you have a nanny, if you have kids, you know, uh, my wife and I, we have five kids. Three of them are grown now. Uh, so we have two still uh, that we're child rearing, those child rearing ages. We have expenses there for in-home care. We have a nanny. And I can't remember the last time that my wife did laundry. I can't remember my wife cooked the meal. I can't remember the last time my wife uh, um, uh, did the dishes, uh, cleaned the house because we hire people for that type of stuff. So instead of going and directing this money to the IRS, hopefully they create jobs, what do we do? We redirected that money to pay a nanny, to pay cleaning services. So instead of providing the quality through the government, we say, hey, our government says, hey, we can create that, and hire people and train people based on our expectations ourselves. And we feel better about the money we spend there. Uh, host events, parties, utilities. If you're an entrepreneur, there's so many expenses you can write off in your home as a home-based, working from home type of person in this gig economy that we're talking about. Especially during this lockdown, especially during this pandemic, a lot of people are working from home. This is a book that you should pick up to allow you a map to get you to a destination of saying, hey, I've got a bunch of expenses. How do I actually write it off in my taxes? It's a good book for you guys to pick up. Second part of this, if you have a car, let's say you're commuting. If you're going back to your job, there's no tax deductions. I remember paying three, four, five hundred bucks a month for a car payment. Some of you guys are paying six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollars for car payments. Well, as an employee, there is no tax deductions. Why? Because you're not establishing a trade or business. When you are an entrepreneur and you are doing that, guess what? You can start uh, start deducting. If it's for business purposes, you can start deducting mileage. You can start deducting a portion of your car payments. You can start deducting the depreciation. Uh, uh, remember, an asset is something that gains value. Well, if this is, is, this is losing value, if you're an entrepreneur, you can actually write off with the car depreciating, so therefore that money goes back into your asset or income category. Uh, Uber and Lyft, there's a lot of benefits there if you have a car that you're using for business. So when you're looking at uh, uh, your car too as well, it could be used for marketing purposes. You know, some people have uh, their car wrapped uh, in, in their brand or their company, their phone numbers. So these are certain things that you can use your business for as a deduction to create an asset versus liability as it comes to the second basic expense that most people have, which is a car and, and or transportation. The next one, all right, what about you? You wanna go on vacation, you wanna to go to Hawaii, you wanna to go to Cancun, you wanna to go to Puerto Rico, wherever. Here's the thing, as an employee, guess what? These are expenses. This is a liability. This is an expenditure. You have you, your husband, your wife, your kids, your parents, your friends. That's a liability. That's an expenditure. That's, a, that, that's something that's coming out of your asset column, that's coming out of your income as an employee. There is no deductions for that. However, if you're an entrepreneur and you package in together, hey, if I have a business conversation, if I have a conference over there and I can, I can deduct my fund, there's a chapter in here that says, hey, how to turn your vacation into a tax deductible write-off, chapter three here, okay? So this is something you should consider is an entrepreneur, and by the way, just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean you have to be in business 100%. You should, sit or, you should consider saying, you know what, instead of getting a second job or three jobs or four jobs or just driving Uber and Lyft and cashing in, cashing out, start a side business 
start a gig. Here in chapter one of this book, it says, why you be brain dead, but not starting a home-based business? Okay, so it's better starting a side business than a second or third or fourth job. And I say this to myself because I remember when I was a, when I was an Olive Garden, when I was coming out of the military, I was an Olive Garden servant. I was a Jiffy Loop Hood technician. I was a YMCA lifeguard. I had three jobs. But guess what? Once I started establishing a business on the side, I started replacing one job, two jobs, one job, no more jobs. I've been working for myself since 2003. The last time I took a paycheck from somebody was in the early 2000s. 17 plus years I've been depending on myself because somebody showed me entrepreneurship, somebody showed me capitalism, somebody showed, showed me how to establish a business, and the, per, and the person that pays my paychecks is me. And millionaires think that way. And so when you're looking at a vacation, how to turn this vacation, if you wanna take your wife, you wanna take your kids, you wanna take some of your friends, you wanna take other relatives, how do I use this in a way that I can tax deduct my fund? Check this out in this, in this book. Last but not least, you go to your office, you go to your, your, your place of business, your place of work. If you're just an employee there, guess what? No tax deductions. No, uh, no tax deductions to get there. No tax, tax deductions when you finally are working and operating your, your craft. But if you're an entrepreneur, guess what you can write off? So let's take a quick look around my office. So instead of sending additional money to Uncle Sam in terms of taxes, Uncle Sam said, hey, if you're gonna improve an office space to operate your business out of, the things that you spend to establish that area is all tax deductible. Let's take a look at this. Furniture, uh, 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 frames of our guys, uh, chairs, tax deductible, reception desk, tax deductible. See, instead of Uncle Sam trying to administer this money, I did it myself. We created a business out of it. Chandelier, tax deductible. Let's continue. So instead of sending my money to Uncle Sam and Iris and have, have them spend it on my behalf, guess what I do? Uncle Sam says, hey, why don't you spend it on your own because you establish a business? Why don't you go rent a office equipment? Why don't you rent a printer or scanner? Tax deductible, right? Instead of sending money to IRS and, and taxes, hopefully they employ somebody else. Boom, Ivan right here, employee, tax deductible. <laughs> so instead of, sending, instead of sending money to Uncle Sam, say, hey, why don't you help uh, people get jobs? I created jobs, boom, office furniture, cubicles for rent, tax deductible. Furniture, tax deductible. Chairs, tax deductible. Signage to help my guys inform to run their business, have, uh, run a sales organization, tax deductible. Training area, seats, chairs, TV, blackboard, tax deductible. Instead of sending my money to Uncle Sam to hopefully he creates jobs again, boom, I hire staff right here. We create jobs instead of sending money to taxes. Tax deductible, she's feeding her family on her own without depending upon government, church, or charity. Here's another area, our boardroom. Instead of sending money to Uncle Sam to hopefully he create jobs and, and puts my money out that I hope that he uses it in the right way, he says, hey, why don't you start a business, TV, blackboards, create opportunity for Mama Cuisine. <laughs> All right, opportunity. Circling money around. What information to look at? Now it's 150. So I wanted to take a now the market is dropped. Now 150. Instead of spending money on Uncle Sam and taxes, we create jobs. Boardroom, tax deductible. Chandelier, tax deductible. Create opportunities for Morris Hansberry, who's only throwing bags in the back of the Southwest Airliner, making $200,000 a year now. Tax deductible. So, for example, took my family here to Hawaii. The business portion, we had a conference, tax deductible. The fun portion while we were in Hawaii, took my dad on a helicopter ride. Took our team out to a, a leadership retreat in Lake Tahoe. Tax deductible for business portion. The fun part, we enjoyed the sunsets and snowboarding. Another place we took our guys for a leadership retreat, right here in Louisville, Kentucky. We visited the Kentucky Derby, watched the Kentucky Derby. Business portion, tax deductible. Fun part, not tax deductible, but we had a blast. 20 years after being there in the Persian Gulf War, came back as a civilian, as an entrepreneur, and my wife and I enjoyed an 82 foot yacht in the Persian Gulf, in Dubai. Business portion, tax deductible. Fun part, obviously not, but boy, we had a blast. Other company trip we took, business portion, tax deductible. Where do we go to? Italy, Greece, Croatia. Enjoyed it again, our infamous jump picture. Tax deductible. Remember what I was mentioning before, that you can, you can buy cars or lease cars through your corporation? This is what we did. We started making some money, understanding the different rules in the money game, guess what? Cars, for business purposes, tax deductible. Business meeting for Michael Jones' brand new restaurant here in Oak Brook. Boom. Cigars, conversation, tax deductible. My mentor, Patrick B. David, his Ferrari, use it for business purposes. Life and Entrepreneur, 90 seconds, guess what? Tax deductible. Kevin Hart, charity celebrity poker tournament. 
had conversations with uh, Kevin Hart, Phil Helmuth, the number one poker player in the world, Mike Francis, the number one gangster uh, in the world in terms of er earnings. Guess what? That conversation, this event, tax deductible. Okay, now that we're back, you have to ask yourself this thing as an employee. How many guys have a car payment, house payment? How many guys have a cell phone payment? How many guys have a Wi-Fi, internet? How many guys uh, <laughs> eat food? The better question for you to ask yourself is this. If you're spending money already, why aren't you writing it off in your taxes? You cannot do it as an employee, but you can do it as an entrepreneur. You can do it as an aspiring millionaire because you're establishing a trade or business, according to verbal use, from the IRS tax code. So you're like, Matt, I get it. So how? How do I get this done? Listen, here's what I know. When I was making no money, I filed, I filed a 1040 easy tax form. It's two pages, right? But if you are growing a business, if you're growing a trade, you're on your journey to you become a cash flow first generation millionaire, guess what you start using now? You start using people like an accountant, an enrolled agent, or a CPA to have in-depth conversations at how to build your business you use creative tax deductions that's legal and ethical. So therefore, instead of spending money in taxes as a liability, you're redirecting that money that you otherwise paid in taxes, and now you reinvest it back into your business as an asset. And guess what? The IRS, the government, incentivizes you to do just that. And a second note, if you're now starting to do this, start a personal account and start a business account. Two different checking accounts. Do not commingle. Do not mix them. Have your accounts separate. So it's easy for you to report this to your, to your uh, accountant, for the, somebody that's helping you do the taxes, business purposes, and personal, personal uses. Third thing, study the tax codes. Every year, just like when every president comes in, uh, the, I think they used to call it the uh, uh, AAFA, Accountants, Attorneys, Financial Advisors, Jobs Security Act. Because these things keep those professions I mentioned employed because things are always changing. What happened a year ago, what happened five years ago, what happened 10 years ago may not be what's happening today. So therefore you have to constantly study tax code or find an accountant or find a CPA or find an enrolled agent, somebody to keep you up to speed with these things. And where they put it usually? In books. Just like my buddy here, Sandy Bodkin, he puts all his knowledge and updates it every year in his book here on how to lower your taxes big time. So as I wrap up, ask yourself a few questions. Number one, what kind of life do you want to live? What kind of life do you want to live? Do you just want to settle, say, you know what? My job's paying me 30 grand a year. My job's paying 50 grand a year. My job's paying me 100 grand a year. And maybe I save my way to become a millionaire. It's be a long way for you to do that. But if you want to compress time frames, if you want to accelerate that, guess what? You venture off, you find yourself a business, establish a trade, and say, you know what? I can probably accelerate the time frame instead of spending 40, 50, 60 years working for somebody else to save a million bucks. I can accelerate this hey, in combination with my job. I can start a side business instead of a second job. I can start a side business instead of allowing these IRS tax deductions to work in my favor because it's going to lower my tax bill instead of it being a liability. I can reinvest that back into an asset that creates more cash flow. So therefore it makes my job a secondary or replaceable thing. Because here's the thing, millionaires don't want a tax refund. Now, I remember coming back in the day, coming back from uh, uh, um, the military and a deployment, we cannot wait to get our tax forms in mail so therefore we can file our taxes. But man, they can give a crap about getting a tax refund. What they want to do is get the tax refund throughout the year to get that money reinvested so therefore they can control it. So millionaires don't think about getting a tax refund. Matter of fact, millionaires want to pay tax, but as least as possible, they can give a shit about getting a tax refund. And number two, what do you want? What type of lifestyle do you want to live? If you're willing to learn and study task codes to increase your capacity, to increase your knowledge base, to increase your understanding about how to win the money game, it, it translates to what you want, to have financial freedom. You know, I've, I've never had somebody say, man, thank God I've, I'm, I'm financially free now from all the money I saved in the bank. Why? Because what's the bank earning in terms of interest rate today? 0.5%? You know, there's a fancy rule out there. If you divide the interest rate by the amount of money that you have, it's going to take you, in this example, 144 years for your money to finally double. For your 1,000, 144 years at half a, percent, half a percent interest rate to finally double to 2,000. Are you willing to wait that long? So what do you want? What type of life do you want to live? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to say, let me digest this information, let me surround myself with our thinking bigger and acting bigger, study the codes, read and carry and add, say, you know what, if I want to become a cash flow millionaire, that adds a different amount of responsibility to me. Maybe that's something I should consider adopting into my life. Maybe I should, sit, I should consider, if I want to have this for my family, I should increase my capacity say, I need to learn this new skill set, and here's the coolest part. You don't have to go to college to figure this stuff out. I didn't go to college. 
I didn't have a sales background. I definitely didn't have a business background. Guess, guess what I started to do? I started hanging around with more people to start thinking bigger and obviously making more money. And number three, ask yourself this question. What change could you make with the money saved from taxes? Are you just trying to say, you know, I'm just gonna save money for a rainy day. And guess what? There's a lot of rainy days in your life. You know what I discovered? I found more rainy days in my life than sunny days. Why? Because I never elevated over my financial position to be financially free and financially happy. I can cut a check to eliminate the rainy day. But here's the thing too as well. If you understand the rule of money game and say, I've got money saved from unnecessarily paying income taxes and redirecting it from a liability to an asset, guess what? I'm going to have a lot of bright days ahead. For example, the holidays are coming up, right? Holidays are coming up. I, I think the retailers right now, I'm recording this video in October of 2020, the retailers are saying Black Friday specials already in October. It's not even Black Friday. Black Friday was normally reserved for the Friday after Thanksgiving. I don't know if it's for the pandemic. I don't know if it's because of the retail apocalypse, but there's Black Friday special happening right now. And once I learned how to master the rules of the money game, guess what every day became? Black Friday. <laughs> once I started mastering the control of my income from somebody else to myself and understood that IRS can, can take their hand more and more and more out of my pocket and I can reinvest that money back into my business, which generated me more income, this generated more jobs, which generated more productivity, because it started happening. Every day became Black Friday. And as I wrap up, take out your cell phone, okay? Last 10 people you sent a text message to. You got it? Last 10 people you actually had a conversation with on your, on your call logs. You got it? Here's my question to you. How many of them are thinking like this? How many of them are first generation cash flow millionaires? How many of them are willing to fight financially for what they want? How many of them? Oh, the last 10 people sent a text message to, the last 10 people you made a, made a phone call to and actually had a conversation. How many of them? And if you say, oh, Matt, none of them. Well, guess what? They're talking about rainy days, pandemic, bad days, dark days, boom, boom, boom. That's all they're gonna be living because that's how they're thinking. Versus first generation cash flow millionaires who are thinking productivity, what the best that life has to offer, guess what they're thinking about? They're thinking about sunny days. And how the rest of their life, even though storms may come, guess what? It's still to them. Sunny days. See, right now what's going on through the economy, what's going on through this recession, what's going on through this pandemic, guess what's starting to erupt? Entrepreneurs that are thinking better, the economy is resetting for people to think sunny days and preparing themselves to be in a position where even though these days may come, Understand the rules of the money game. Understand that IRS can actually incentivize you to be a business owner, to be an entrepreneur, to actually be a cash flow millionaire, to have less dependence upon the government and more dependence upon you. You gotta understand, these conversations exist. The better question is, are you having them? And I hope that you are. So with that being said, guys, if you haven't had those type of conversations, maybe this channel might serve as that conversation for you now temporarily until you find yourself, some folks around you locally, that you have access to, to have these ongoing type of conversations. So two videos I want you guys to check out. Number one, check out this video here by Sandy Botkin. I interviewed him a few years ago uh, before Trump uh, became act an actual president. Uh, we talked about Trump tax cuts and how it would benefit you. The second video I want you guys to check out is how millionaires look at getting a big tax refund. Okay? Oftentimes, man, I was thinking, man, I, I cannot wait to get my $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 dollar tax refund. Forget all that. Imagine if you can control your money throughout the whole year with an extra three, four, five thousand dollars would do for you throughout the year to help increase your income, to increase more of an asset or income base versus expenditures and expenses. And by the way, I just got word that my friend Adam Sasek over there at Valuetainment Economics, he's just released a video called Valuetainment's Taxes for Dummies. Check out Adam Sasek's video right here. Check it out for your increase of knowledge of how taxes can be more of an asset to you than a liability. So that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you're thinking. I'd love to know your aha moments, if any. Drop it in the comment section below. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure you click like and follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notification, be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Our next goal is to 25,000 subs. And remember, uh, we are giving out three books to the best, most motivated sharers, commenters, subscribers of our community. Three books here signed by my mentor, Patrick David, the author of the book, Your Next Five Moves. He's got his, uh, his well, actually it's personally for me, but uh, we got some books here signed and it's gonna go from our address to your address once you cross 25,000 subs for the first three people that we consider through our analytics the most frequent commenters and share, person that shares our videos the most. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you start thinking more like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire to take taxes more as an asset 
versus a liability. That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Drop your comments below. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.